A federal judge has thrown out a lawsuit filed by two papermakers who wanted to recover the estimated $1 billion cost of cleaning up PCBs from the Fox River. Good evening, everyone. So those companies and others are still on the hook to pay for the cleanup. That's right. Fox 11's Laura Smith has our new details. The Fox River cleanup began last spring. The river is polluted with PCBs, which are considered harmful to humans and the environment. PCBs were used to make carbonless copy paper developed by Appleton Papers Incorporated and its one-time owner, NCR Corporation. Waste product was also sold to other papermaking facilities, which resulted in additional discharge into the river. In 2007, the federal government ordered the cleanup and identified eight paper companies it deemed responsible for the costs. After lengthy discussions over who would pay for it, last year, Appleton Papers and NCR sued more than 20 businesses and government entities seeking to divvy up cleanup costs, which recent estimates set at one to one and a half billion dollars. A trial was scheduled to start January 4th, but a federal judge in Green Bay threw out the lawsuit Wednesday and canceled the trial, ruling Appleton Papers and NCR cannot hold the defendants liable. The ruling, the judge writes, simply means that as among these liable parties, the plaintiffs are not entitled to recover from the defendants for their costs incurred in cleaning up damage caused by dangers the plaintiffs created. In his ruling, the judge wrote Appleton Papers and NCR knew PCBs were toxic in a general sense at a very early stage, the 1950s certainly. The government banned PCBs in the 1970s. He later wrote the defendants, which include other paper mills and wastewater treatment plants, were either completely faultless or nearly so in the PCB contamination. ANCR spokesperson had just one comment. We're disappointed in the ruling and are considering our options. A lawyer for Appleton Papers issued a statement. It reads, we are disappointed with the judge's rulings and are considering our options, including a possible appeal. These decisions may have implications extending beyond this lawsuit, affecting the ongoing cleanup effort. One of the defendants, Georgia Pacific, says it's very pleased with the judge's ruling. We're currently reviewing the judge's ruling to figure out what the implications are for Georgia Pacific and the work on the cleanup on, of the river. Georgia Pacific says it remains committed to fulfilling all of the orders issued by state and local governments regarding the cleanup. And the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is hopeful the cleanup will still continue on schedule. However, the agency, also commenting on behalf of the federal government, says the ruling does affect how the cleanup ultimately gets paid for. It's ruling that said that those companies are still liable for cleanup through the government. And because they're still liable and have a role to play in paying for this cleanup, that's a basis for us to sit down with all the major parties and try to work out a, an agreement to pay for the entire cleanup. Laura Smith, Fox 11 News. Now, in a separate ruling today, the judge approved a settlement with 11 of the defendants found to have minimal involvement with the discharge of PCBs into the river. Court documents say they are responsible for less than one-sixth of a percent of PCBs in the river and will pay a combined $2 million towards the cleanup efforts. They include the Green Bay Metropolitan Sewerage District, Nina Foundry Company, and Wisconsin Public Service Corporation. A similar settlement has been proposed for the city of De Pere, but the judge has not ruled on that yet.